welcome to episode 120 of Chew on This, a Nerds United podcast. I'm BJ. Vic. So we're going to do a little something different today, folks. We are going to play a game that we like to call What If. So yeah. I, I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Uh, we, we came up with, I don't know, 10 questions each. What If questions. It could be anything. Uh, well, nerd related, I guess. And uh, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. But, we'll uh, see what kind of disaster this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you may not ever hear this episode. We might have a wig in an episode that replaces it. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, uh, so who, who you, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first since this, this episode was my idea. So whether it succeeds or fails is all on me. Um, yeah. It, so besides the first. fact that we tried to do this a year ago, and that was yeah, our first and, wing in an episode. And, <laughs> <laughs> that's how good this episode is. That's the background of how good this episode might be. Is that we tried doing it last year and didn't even make the recording. <laughs> didn't even make the the idea yeah. phase. <laughs> All right. So let's keep it. Let's keep it. I'm gonna build. It's like a crescendo. I'm gonna just go higher and higher with the questions. Oh, it's like a so mixtape. Start off yeah, a little I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to start like a little bit <laughs> subtle in the beginning. So what if you had any choice of person to come on this show? Who would it be? Jesus Christ. That's my last question to you. Ah! Well, that's what I get for going first. That's right. You son of a bitch. I'll answer this one after you. How okay. Okay. Uh, well, there's two ways I can go with this. I can go with the person we least like. And tell, you know, and and give them the hard ass questions. Or I can go with someone that, you know, we really love and want to talk to. So we talk about this guy all the time on the podcast about getting this guy even jokingly. But to have Robert Downey Jr. on would be fucking incredible to talk to that guy because I think he would be just super fun and, you know, and and who knows where the interview would go. It probably wouldn't even turn into an interview. It would just turn into like a, a laugh fest. Um, so I'd love to, love to talk to Robert Downey Jr. If there was no questions asked, we'd just get whoever we wanted. And But on the flip side, if we can get Michael Bay in here, or even like Zack <laughs> Snyder, <laughs> and be like question him like we questioned Toby. I would, I would, <laughs> I would probably want to do Michael Bay instead if we went that route, and here's why. Because uh-huh. I know Zack Snyder looks like he's, it looks like he's trying to at least make a good film. That's true. You know, you That's know, true. My, like there's no way Michael Bay is trying to make a good Transformers <laughs> movie. There's no fucking way. It's all about if that dude. I, I seriously, if he told me he was actually trying, I might even be more mad. <laughs> like I, I would be, I would be, I would be so. I would actually shake his hand if he was like, hey, yeah, you're right. I, I'm not a great filmmaker, and I haven't tried to make a great film since, like, or a good film since, uh, like, the first Bad Boys. <laughs> like, I have phoned it in for fucking years, and they just keep giving me money, and I keep taking it. And you can rip me on the internet as much as you want, but I'm fucking rich, and I date supermodels. <laughs> so fuck you. <laughs> like, yeah, if he just said that, like, I'd be, I'd be happy. But if he said... You know, I actually try to make the Transformers <laughs> films. I would be fucking pissed. Um, but on the other side, yeah, on the other side, my without a doubt, if I had to choose anybody in the world to interview to bring on this show, it would be Mark Hamill. Oh man, Mark Hamill one, yeah. were the day where I would, if I had to choose, like, because this is like a dream scenario. If I had to choose Mark Hamill, it would be in a scenario where he doesn't have anything to fucking do that day, nothing. Right, and we just hit record. And we make sure he has snacks, he has his, food. He'll be on his deathbed. He has, he has, like, you know, coffee, whatever he needs throughout the day. I'll even fucking put a porta potty next to the recording studio <laughs> so that he doesn't have to leave. So I can actually record Mark Hamill taking a shit. <laughs> That's how much I would want him on the show. That would be amazing. He forgets to turn yeah. his mic off. <laughs> yeah, because you know that guy could talk, you know? like, And, and he's got so many stories, and he's, he's like a fucking, like... Uh, He's like a computer when it comes to this shit. He he knows so much stuff in the world that we love. He's like the uncle you, know? you always wanted. I mean, he was yeah he he was yeah who happens to have great World War Two stories and in but in this case World War Two is being Luke Skywalker. <laughs> so that would definitely, be, without a doubt, that would be amazing. It would be it would be Mark Hamill. I like. All right, you go. Answer. You go. Okay. Well, what if the uh, Nolan Batman movies never existed? You know how how different would the DCEU be? 
Ooh, that's a good one. Because they basically that entire the entire DCEU would be com- wouldn't have had Nolan trying to put his realism on every single DC character. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't get the brooding Superman. Hmm. I mean, you'd still get Superman Returns, right? Because that was way before Batman Yeah, Begins. that's in 2006. So, yeah, that's the Brian Singer. <clears throat> Man, I don't know. It, it would probably not be as... It, I don't think the DCU... I, I don't think that's the direction they would have went. Mm-hmm. I don't think if Nolan proved that you can be dark and brooding and make a serious, dead serious um, comic book movie and prove that it could be done well, um, I, I don't think you get somebody coming into a room and saying, hey, you know that, you know, S- Superman's like, you know, stands for hope and peace and and all the good. He's a giant Boy Scout. I want to make him into a goth guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you know, that I don't think that conversation ends with the guys at Warner Brothers going, yeah, let's do that. Right. Because it worked with, you know, it worked with Nolan. So I think we get a, a lot brighter. We might even get, we, we might have even have gotten, um, a second crack at what's his face is um, Justice League. Oh right, uh, what the, Wolfgang what, uh, Peterson or no 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 no. It was uh, it was the guy who did Mad Max. Oh George Miller. Yeah, George he Miller. had he had Justice League That's before right. it got scrapped. That's right. So yeah, I don't think it would be as dark as it is now. Okay. All right, my turn. Let's see. <clears throat> All right, what if you had to cross over two completely different properties? What would they be like? So somebody comes to you, let's say Paramount, and says you can have, even though they don't own all the properties, you can you can bring together two different properties that have nothing to do with each other and make a movie. What would it be like? I like just to fuck with them to pitch the story. I'd be like, well, I want to I want to cross over Annie with Garbage Pail Kids, <laughs> you know, like something like that. Right. So what would yours be? If you want to go the series uh, route, like what would your two properties that have nothing to do with each other? Back to the Future and Indiana Jones. So oh, that's a good one. So, like, if uh, you know Marty goes back in time and runs around with uh, Indiana Jones, like helping him get artifacts, or like, or or telling him, like, "Hey, you fucked up here, so I'm coming back here to, to help fix this situation." Um, so like a better a better Legends of Tomorrow. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely like a better Legends of Tomorrow. Then you got uh, Doc Brown keeps fucking things up, and yeah. or no, he would try to fix it, or and Marty would, would be the one fucking. Yeah, up. Marty's the one. Marty would be the one yeah, fucking. Yeah, it yeah, up. totally. Like taking like King Tut's staff or something. Right, because he's like, yeah, I'm going to take this in the future to get millions of dollars rich, off it, and it right. ends up like, like he did with the sports almanac. <laughs> yeah, and it ends up creating this like. He ends up with his mom, like, with a third fake tip. <laughs> I, I want to actually see <laughs> and him Biff, end up and sleeping Biff, with his and mom. Biff now is, <laughs> and Biff now is president of the United States. Right. So they're, like, you know, they're they're back in time, and, and Biff is, like... They he, basically come to America now. Biff is, like, a, a, an Egyptian, and they... Pharaoh, yeah. Yeah, and they're, like, in the Ben-Hur type situation, and... And they're being chased on a chariot by Biff and his cronies, and then like he crash into a, uh, you know, uh, a shit cart full of camel dung, or something, or 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 lion dung because it's like Spartacus, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, <It's> lion shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I I think those two would be would be pretty. Cool. Oh, that, yeah, that's a that's a good answer. You're up. Um. Okay, so what if you were called in to script Doctor Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi, before, during, or after filming? What would you do? Uh, bef- let's see. Doesn't matter. Okay, so <coughs> so because the, the like reason why I said before, during, or after is because I'm sure that they didn't change anything even after you know. Carrie Fisher, God rest her soul, died. They still didn't change anything. So, right. what like if you read that script, you know, before, during, after, whatever filming, like what what would you do to, to fix it? Just the Carrie Fisher thing, or well, just anything, script doctor, anything, the whole thing? It, it, any the script doctor, the whole damn thing. 
or you can pick I a think scene I would, I would okay so I'm lucky I I'm, I'm glad you asked this question knowing that I saw it the second time around because mm-hmm. I think if I if you asked me this question before I saw it the second time I'd be way more harsh right but after seeing it the second time I would probably keep most of 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 his story and Rian Johnson's story in there mm-hmm. and just change a couple of things um so I I definitely would have made a, a way for for Luke to not be so um, cut off from the force. Not just, I mean, not cut <coughs> off from the force, but just not caring. You know, like I and I want to. I would. I would have changed a little bit more of the uh, Luke Skywalker giving up. I, I, I. Those are the parts that even after the second time I saw, I, I didn't think it justified him giving up. I really didn't. Um, so I would have I would have had a flashback scene or or you know have him actually try and give a real reason why he decided to to hide out there for for forever and cut himself off from the force because what actually takes place I don't think my Luke Skywalker would have done that. Okay. Um and then, you know, after I probably would have I probably would have tried to gracefully see if the special effects were good enough to put Holdo into the shuttle instead. Okay. We mentioned this in our in our review. Right. I I would have I would flip them around and give Carrie Fisher that that send off with the Star Destroyer. Uh with the sorry, the dreadnought yeah. being cut in two. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. That'd be a really so that, epic death. That would have been a, a great way for her to go off because I really don't want to see her dying off camera. I think probably those two things. Oh, and fixing the dice scene. Fuck the dice scene. Yeah, but I would still, I would still do the force projection. I would keep it in there. Okay. Oh I think, wow. I think I would still keep it in there. But watching it the second time, I understood why that took place, and I it that that scene works better with me knowing or seeing that Luke just doesn't fucking give up, and there's a real reason why he's doing what he's doing. Okay. So keeping that ending of him force projecting, even though I would have loved to see him take down a shit ton of, you know, start um, at ats with a lightsaber, that would have been fucking awesome. But trying to keep the core of the film the way it is, I, I think those are the things I would have changed. Only those two things. You know, it's kind of funny you said that because I remember watching Rebels and Obi Wan. You know, just slices Darth Maul really quickly. And I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, oh, fuck, like I really wanted an epic battle. And then right. now when I go back and watch it, I'm like, nah, that makes a lot more sense. The it's way they beautiful. Did it. it is beautiful the way they did it. It, it just, it, I think at the time, it's just that, that that anticipation was built up so much. Yeah. And then the way they did it, I was like, what? You know, I felt robbed. And then the more, like, I've, I haven't watched that in a really long time. And then the other day I watched it with my son and I was like, oh my God, that scene is amazing. Like, why didn't, yeah. I, why didn't I like this before? This is really great, you know? Yeah, I think I remember, I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast, but I remember you saying, like, you were, you were pissed at that. And I was like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah. That scene was fucking it's, awesome. It took me a while, man, to, to kind of, like, after I removed myself from it for a while and then watched it again. I was because like, there's oh, nothing man. he could have done with two cartoon characters better than a live action version of their original first fight. Right. There's nothing he could have done. Not to mention all the shit that and Darth what, Maul's and what gone through. What would that have added? Honestly, what? what yeah, would exactly. That would have added? Exactly. <clears throat> so, I mean, it has it to me that that Obi Wan Darth Maul ending of the fight scene right there <laughs> after Qui Gon's killed, like that that entire lightsaber scene is probably top two yeah for me yeah um or top three now uh yeah top it's up there top three <laughs> but but thinking about all the shit that darth maul went through compared to you know what obi-wan was doing the whole time just meditating and concentrating and building his power through the force and darth maul's been through fucking hell yep you know he's not even the same character fighting obi-wan you know so it probably would have been even worse if that that broken down Darth Maul faced a younger Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh yeah, like it probably it probably would have been quicker than that. Yeah. So I don't know. I just love that scene. Um, is it my turn or your turn? It is uh, your turn. My turn, right? Because yeah, okay. So you asked the Star Wars one. Okay, so let's say Kathleen Kennedy said to you, "I want you, BJ, to write and direct a Star Wars story." Anyone you want. It doesn't matter what it is. 
I'll pay you whatever you want to, but here's the catch. If it if it if you if it's successful, it's great. You can go on and direct another one. But if it fucking fails, you have to fluff my horses for the rest of their lives to breed. <laughs> the rest of your lives if it fails. You, that means you've got to jerk off every single one of our, your horses <laughs> to can't lift horse cock I, anymore. Well, I, I, I'm, st- I'm going to do it because I, I know exactly what story I would do. Um, so and, you would still do it? Yeah. Still just on the it. outside chance that you fuck it up and now you've got to jerk off horse cock well, for the rest of your I, life. I'm not a hothead like, like you know, some of the other directors and I'm not, and I'm really collaborative and all that stuff. So I'm not worried about that. What, what I would be worried about is uh, oversaturation of Star Wars at that point and people not going out to watch it. Because like... Well, okay, so then knowing that, what would your story be? Okay, so the story would be... Um, I read a book a long time ago called Tales of the Bounty Hunters. And uh, I always thought it'd be really cool to see that story put together. Essentially, it's like... It's almost like... Um, I don't want to say an Ocean's Eleven of bounty hunters, but it, it but it goes through all the backstories of all the bounty hunters and how they end up on the uh, ship that Vader hires them to go after Han Solo. So you see h- how all their backstories are, and then where they end up. Um, it was a great it was a great story. Some of the stories were really really good. Some were a little cheesy, um, like the fact that that Boba Fett never died in the Sarlacc pit. He like climbed out, and Dengar was there to help him. You know, and then they just kind of ride off in the sunset. And it's kind of like how it ended. But I found it fascinating to see like the stories um, about Forlom and Zuckus and Dengar and um, IG-88 had a really cool story. Um, so I would do like Tales from the Bounty Hunter. But I don't know what I would call it. I guess I would call it Bounty Hunters, a Star Wars story or whatever. And just showed their their rise and their ranks and how they ended up on the ship you know, at the end, at the end, it would be like them going to the ship that Vader's on. What, what was the mm. ship? I can't remember what his ship was called now. Um, was it the, no, what was the name of his ship? Uh, fuck. I can't oh, remember. Shit. So anyway, it, it's that scene where they all end up there and he's like, you know, no disintegrations, you know, and he's like, I need you to get Han Solo and find the Falcon and all that shit. So the yeah. Executor. So I would do bounty hunters, a star Wars story. The ships is the executor. Executor. Okay, yeah. I don't think I would go with anything that was a novel. I think I would I would do an original story, and well, I would I would change it back. If mm-hmm. I if 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 I've got to go full balls of the wall because I don't want to jerk off horse cock for the rest of my life, <laughs> I would change it back to a Star Wars anthology, and I would I would I would do a separate mass story back before anything of the prophecy came about like kind of, I would always go back to the old Republic. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why is not to actually dive into what Bioware did, but it's so far backwards that, um, I can still have that nostalgic look of the seventies, like the seventies star Wars, Mm -hmm. but with some added like flair to it. And it would be about uh, a person, a kid who, discovers his use of the force but doesn't go to the jedi temple like he refuses to go and it would be his journey about trying to find out who he actually is and it as stays away from the jedi stays away from the sith like it's just his journey um that's probably what i would do cool yeah that's, um, that sounds good so hopefully that movie would play out so i don't have to jerk off the black <laughs> stallion for the rest of my life what contract is this? And why would they make you do that? That's like I don't know. Cra- I was just trying to think of like scenarios, it's like, like sadistic, man. Yeah. <laughs> like bang. Um, okay, so Jumanji did bonkers business. Um, so let's say they're they're going to make uh, another one. They're going to make a, a third one, um, and you're tapped to come up with an original idea for Jumanji three. What uh, would what would that idea be? Do I have to keep the same cast? It doesn't matter. I just what's the idea? It doesn't matter. Well, it depends on the cast. It doesn't matter what you do. <coughs> well, if I don't have to keep the same cast, I could do whatever I want. But I ha- if I have to keep the same cast, that's a little bit different. No, it just says an original idea. 
So you could start you could start completely fresh like they did in number two, or you, you can continue with them and add new characters or whatever you want, or do a do a whole all star thing and digitally recreate Robin Williams if you wanted to, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Well, there's only so many games that you can probably think of to get Jumanji to actually be Jumanji, right? Mm-hmm. So they did Sega Genesis, I think it was, for this updated version, which I thought was awesome. Because um, all of my other friends had Super Nintendo. Uh, or GameCube, was it? Um, so the next th- the next thing would either be like probably like um, online player games or cell phone games. Oh. Those type of social games would probably be the next evolution of going to the next thing because social media. And and I would probably, how would I, the problem that I would think of right now is how would that game be digitized in the, in like the cloud mm-hmm. all the way from, all the way from there. I don't know, maybe switch like, oh, maybe like at a, at a flea market, somebody sells like, you know, has the Jumanji game there, and it gets like knocked over into a basket of like cell phones that are used cell phones. <laughs> there, there you go. go. There you go. Done. <laughs> that's my. And then game over. and then let's and then you just figure out the characters from there. There you go. Because that's the. I think that's the trickiest part. Is trying to figure out how you get the game to be the next thing. See, I I I agree there, but also I would figure out a way to bring in the origins of it. Like, how did it come to be? Oh, yeah. You know, like, like is there some, yeah. like, crazy voodoo person that put to, put it together to begin with? You know, and then you meet their ancestors or some shit, and they're trying to create something. Maybe that's what that story would be. The yeah. rest of the story would be. Maybe, like, that's that's the way, like, it keeps morphing. Because, like, you don't want to do, like, a Nightmare on Elm Street thing where Freddy comes back every time no matter what, right? <laughs> like, you want to give it, a, right. you want to give it, like, a fucking closure. You right. know what I mean? Like you want to you want to give it some kind of closure. Yeah, Jumanji game over. There you go. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Patent it. <laughs> Done. Print it. Print, that, print the you money. Heard it here. Yeah. Just print. make sure the rock is in it. <laughs> they print the money while we just sit back and go. Fuck. That was my idea. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> there you go. That's a, that's a good way. That's a good one. I, I I came up with the beginning. You came up with the rest. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> print it. All right. Let's see. <laughs> All right. If you were, what if you were directing porn, and what serious A-list Hollywood composer would you get to do the soundtrack for your porn? <laughs> Dude, obviously John Williams. <laughs> of course, he'd you be ama- like he- so. Picture, picture John <laughs> Williams, all, is no. <laughs> like all majestic. No, he has to do he it. He has to do. <laughs> yeah, he has to do it. Okay. In this in this scenario, no matter who you pick, has to fucking do it. Like if Mozart, like if Mozart was alive, he would have to do it. Um, well, you know, in that case, I could always get like, like uh, Ray Charles, or get like uh, Stevie Wonder, because then they wouldn't have. Well, to watch I was, it. Well, I was thinking, I would be like thinking, like, what kind of porn am I doing here? Right. You know, like if I'm doing if I'm doing like a romantic comedy porn. Or like, hey, Pizza Boy shows up to the front door porn. I think I'm probably going to use like an 80s type <laughs> like synthesizers. Yeah, um, yeah. I probably well, use like, I probably use the same type of music that we use, okay, use well, in Ferris say, Bueller's I mean, Day if I, Off. If I, yeah, if I'm going to use like John Williams, I'd, it'd have to be like a sci fi porn parody or something like that. And then have, uh, you know, uh, have him do, uh, well, you'd have to create something, I guess, from scratch. Like I, what I love about his music is that it it's like an it's like a third character in a movie, you know, it's like another right. character. So it would have to be, <laughs> it'd have to, like when I guess when they're having sex like really fast, it's like this like really fast like like crazy like it's like Jaws like sped up. Yeah, totally. Um, and then after that, he just fucking retires. He's like, I'm done. I'm not. I'm, I've done back. everything. I've done everything. I did I've it. done everything now. <laughs> so Spielberg needs to, or Lucas needs to direct some sort of like porn comedy or porn sci-fi movie. I would think like I would want to do a porn that's like 
based on a true story. <laughs> like I would like to do like I would I would like to do like an Apollo thirteen porn. Although that might not that might end up being gay porn once they're in space. <laughs> right. <laughs> but like remember the music for that movie, like how suspenseful oh, it yeah, was. So good. Like now imagine that suspenseful music while they're learning that they're about to die in space and they just start having a great like a big <laughs> gay, gay orgy. orgy. <laughs> yeah, because it's three guys in the fucking cockpit, right? Uh, why did you go there? <laughs> I don't know. Fluffing horses and a Paul 13 game movie. <laughs> well, I was just thinking like how I was just trying to think of like serious oh, type like, okay. music. <clears throat> so let's say they're making, uh, you know, Creed 2 and they decide they're just going to like just put sex in it, you know, like full on, <laughs> like right. you see everything kind of thing. So... <clears throat> You know, they could be doing it in the ring. They could be, uh, you know, working out and doing it in the training room or whatever. And then you have, okay. like, you know, what kind of music, you know, would would, would you play? You know, for the Rocky like music. That. The Rocky. <laughs> da, 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 Eye of the da, Tiger. Da, da. <laughs> Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> Eye of the Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> That's right the, there. <laughs> Print it. Oh, my God. We're just like coming up with ideas left and right. We're rich. We won. Um, All right. Yeah, I think it's your turn. Okay. So what if you could pick any movie from the past to be wiped off the face of the earth, and then you're able to redo it, like remake it completely, what movie would that be? That's that's easy, Transformers. Oh, Okay. That's so easy. It's actually, Transformers that's, that's because it's a pretty easy one. Because like, there's no, there's no other. How many are there? Five now? Six? How many are there? Uh, f- uh, too many. How I many? Think, five. I think there's five. With uh, the Bumblebee one coming out now. Oh, that'll be number six. Yeah. So it, there's no six movies. The shitty toys don't come out. They're all fucking retarded. I don't have to look at like metal that looks like it's just glued together. <laughs> like I don't have to look at any of that shit and then like remake it the way that somebody else should, you know, get to do it. Like uh who would be good to do Transformers? Yeah. Who would be a good director to do Transformers if you had to if you had to do that? I, you know, that's really tough because I be okay like, you know, a Dennis Villeneuve or something like that. Like if he were to do it, he'd probably do a lot more uh, of, about Cybertron. And about the politics of that, and like what happened, and when they turned on each other, and and then and then the place started to go to hell, and then you end it with them going to Earth. You don't, and then that way it segues into the next movie, right? Or you know, like because I I always seen when I saw Spielberg attached as, as executive producer to Transformers, that was the only thing that actually gave me some sort of faith as to like this movie could be somewhat decent, which I was completely fucking wrong. Um, right. Because, like, I, I remember watching Transformers. I was sitting next to my brother, and we saw a trailer for Cloverfield, although at that time there was no name for it. It was just the the Statue of Liberty had roles, and, and we're like, what the fuck is that? Transformers was so bad that all I could think about that entire movie is what the fuck trailer did I watch? Like, what was right. that? So that shows you how bad of a movie Transformer was. Um and you don't get the plastic toys now, so that's not ruined either. Yeah. Like seriously, do you know how much how much good good comes of it <laughs> if Transformer doesn't exist? Right. Like Michael Bay's Transformer doesn't exist. You don't get the shitty cartoons either. Those it's, like comical cartoons, like these shitty cartoons that are out right now. Yeah. Actually the, the newer ones right now are the the ones that are on online. I think it's like iOS nine or something like that, or I forget the name of the, the the online channel that it's on, but there's a new, there's a new Transformers cartoon that's I think is the second season. I watched the first season; it was really good. But you know why it works? Because they're on fucking Cybertron and they look like the old G one. Yep. They're just like a little variations of it, but but the story is like they're intriguing stories. They're way better stories than fucking Transformer Heaven, right? You know, like or you know, clearly Devastator's balls. So. <laughs> So there, there's a realm. Of, so I don't think Bay has anything to do with that cartoon. Um, but every the the one cartoon that came out after Transformers was popular was completely terrible. Yeah, um, they tried to make it all jokey, like Ninja Turtles yeah. and shit. 
Right, exactly. That's not... And then, yeah, so it definitely be Transformers. And I wonder... I'm still trying to figure out who I would get to direct it. The first name that popped into my head was Guillermo del Toro. And I don't know why. And the reason... I think it's not because of Shape of Water, but because I think he would do the human aspect of the story just as well as he would the spectacle of Transformers, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's... That's why I think his films work so well because, you know, Hellboy one and two are so underrated, they and are. if you go back, there's a like there's a humanizing aspect to both those films, and if you don't care about Hellboy, a, a guy in a ridiculous red suit, which really looks good by the way, but like if you don't believe that guy in there, the whole movie doesn't work. Right. So he knows how to do the human side aspect of it. So I think that's why I said. Del Toro, like right off the bat, right on, yeah. Because I don't think he would. I'm, I'm like I'm thinking about some of those films. They're they're bright, but they're not so bright. You know what I mean? Like daylight feels like normal daylight in like London, right? And right. I think that 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 light that's not so bright, like it, how it is in Michael Bay's versions. I think it would work really well with like not a like a fun movie, but not a light movie either. It would be like, it would have a little darkness to it. Yeah, it needs to be serious. None of this fucking masturbation joke bullshit. Right. So, there is my long-winded answer. There you go. I like it. All right, let's see. All right, so, do you remember the episode of uh, Family Guy where Peter finds out, what's her name? Uh, Was it Lois? Yeah, Lois. Lois did the entire band of Kiss. Do you remember that episode? Oh, I seem to remember that vaguely. Yeah, so like Peter was like all happy that she fucked all the guys from <laughs> from, from Kiss. <laughs> so what if you found out your wife did that with the Fellowship of the Ring, even Ian McKellen? Like everybody on Fellowship of the Ring? Like all eight? Yeah, all seven or eight, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I... Would you be as happy as Peter? Probably not, unless she could somehow... <laughs> get me uh, a, a meeting with all would be forgotten if she can get me a meeting with peter jackson i could just sit with him in this hobbit house all day and, uh, and then we'd be square okay <laughs> even <laughs> ian McKellen. A trade-off <laughs> i like how you said that you're like oh wait he's gay yeah even ian mckellen <laughs> yeah even ian mckellen <laughs> yeah no, she I'm... was like, she was like, she, <laughs> she, she did the Fellowship of the Ring like you're a completionist for Star Wars figures. She was like, I got to do the gay guy. It's not, it's not she the full, him. it's not the full, it's not the full Fellowship if I don't get, if I don't get Gandalf. Fellowship of the cock ring. It doesn't, it doesn't work. My, uh, my set is not complete if I don't fuck Gandalf. <laughs> I mean, oh. with the hobbits, I could do two or three at the same time. <laughs> right. But I gotta concentrate on this. I gotta concentrate on Gandalf. <laughs> yeah. If she's listening, babe. If you're listening to this, <laughs> Vic's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think my answer would maybe be the same as yours. It really. To be fair, yeah, I think that would. I'd be like, <laughs> "All right." Or you're like, "Yeah, so." <laughs> do I get to? Talk to Peter Jackson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can Is you that the trade off here? <laughs> yeah. You get him on the phone right now or it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, I am going to be mad. Yeah. You better get me on that on that new Amazon <laughs> Lord of the Rings show. Or I'm gonna be fucking pissed. <clears throat> um, okay. What if uh Pixar is tapped to do an actual Marvel superhero film. Um, I don't want to count Big Hero Six. Okay, so like an actual Marvel property. Let's say, let's say you know the the Marvel movies finish and they're done, and you know, and there's like this gap of time, and Pixar is going to start making Marvel films. So like, uh, what uh, what would they pick? What would they pick to do their first like actual Marvel superhero film? That could be anything. Ooh. Um, so that means I can use previous Avengers or X Men and everything. Yes, any storyline too. Like I forgot to mention that. So super. So who is the superhero going to be, and what storyline would you tackle? And th- and mind you, this isn't like um, I don't have a lot of stipulations here. This isn't um, like an MCU thing where you got to like have all this continuity and shit. You can just make standalone franchise movies, you know, or whatever you want. 
Um, and it's Pixar, right? So it has to be G or PG. Uh, it could be. You know what? It could be PG thirteen. It'll be the first PG thirteen uh, Pixar movie. Fuck. Which storyline? Mm. You know what? I would. I would be because I've already seen it, and I think Pixar would do a great job with it. Because this cartoon actually already exists, but I would love to see Pixar do it. I would love to see um, the Flash storyline. Uh, why am I drawing a blank on the name? That's DC, though. No, I know. Oh, you said Marvel, right? Yeah, but you know what? Let's just make it comic book superhero. That's fine. Okay, Let's so it, it would still book. be Flashpoint. I would, I would, I would, I would love to see Pixar do Flashpoint. Oh, they would do a good job with it, even though like fucking Disney doesn't own. DC, but let's say Disney. No, I know, but Warner like, Brothers. yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this in this scenario, I'll wait for a Marvel movie. I forgot about that. The stipulation was Marvel. <clears throat> um, I would probably want to see, and it's PG thirteen. Oh man, I would love to see. Um, and they just the bought- Fantastic Four. Yeah, I was just gonna say the Fantastic Four with. Uh, with fighting an actual Doctor Doom. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was just going to say they, they just got those properties back, which I was just reading somewhere that they're not going to dip into those anytime soon. It's they're gonna be it's going to be a while. Yeah. Before we see anything on that front, which is fine by me. All right. Cool. I was going to go with I was going to go with the storyline where the X-Men have Wolf, uh, has Magneto pinned. I forget the name of the story, but. It's it's where Magneto pulls the adamantium through. Oh shit! Wolverine's yeah, I remember that. Body. Um, oh, I would have liked to do that, but that's that scene alone would get an R rating. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, it would. That would be amazing, though. I remember that reading that comic, and I was just shocked. Yeah, it was so good. <clears throat> All right, what if you were okay? What if you were hired to direct a movie? But it has to be about a serial. Okay. Like you have to make a movie about Captain f- Crunch or the, something. Crap, yeah, you have to make a Captain Crunch movie or <laughs> like any any serial doesn't have, it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be from the same company any serial. Which one of those would it be? Like the right pop crackle or whatever. Um, I would probably cheat and say Flintstones, but that's that's cheating. Uh, Fruity Pebbles. Uh, yeah, because Fruity Pebbles. I mean, I I loved. Uh, I actually was like one of the few people that loved the uh, live action Flintstones movie they made with John Goodman. The first one. The first one was good. First one was really good. Yeah, second one was like bad. Um, oh, let me think. Let's see a different serial. Um, I do like Captain Crunch, and I do like Fruit Loops. You know, maybe like um, almost like. Uh, a a Wreck-It Ralph situation where I would create a a whole different new serial and then have that person interact with all the other serials, like jumping in and out of there. That's a (laughs) cop-out. Oh, or I could do... cop-out. Or I could do uh, tricks. I could do tricks, and he's kind of like the Charlie Brown of the, of, you know, of the serials. um, Because he's always, or the, or he's the Wile E. Coyote of all the serials. Like, he's always trying to get the tricks, but you're like, silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. So, like, the whole movie, he's trying all these various ways to, like, get the cereal, and he gets fucking thwarted every single time. Um, so, yeah. I would do a serious take on a cereal movie. Really? <laughs> I would do, yeah. I would do uh, Lucky Charms. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> this version of Lucky Charms, he's still, Ooh, you know, he's movie. still... Yes, exactly. It's a horror movie. <laughs> and instead of the kids, they're all children, kids, zombies, mm-hmm. chasing after him for his lucky charms. They don't want his brains. They want his lucky charms so that they can, like, you know, I don't know. I don't give a shit. It's it's all about the kids trying to, like, just thinking about a bunch of kids just chasing down one leprechaun in a <laughs> horror movie. Like, it's fucking freaky. <laughs> what about, so you wouldn't have the leprechaun, the leprechaun's the protagonist and not the antagonist? So yeah, like, yeah. So, the, so the kids are the antagonists. So like, yeah, they're always trying to steal his fucking. They don't even ask. <laughs> the fucking kids don't even ask. They're like, hey, can I have some? They're just fucking trying to grab shit from him. So what? yeah, he's the fucking hero. That's awesome. Okay, he flipped it. I was gonna say like he's yeah. he's the evil. He's like breaking into kids' houses no. and, and killing them for their lucky charms. 
Um, and it's not even a serial Lucky Charms that he's looking for. He's actually looking for charms that they consider Lucky. Right. So that he could turn the kids back to normal kids. Right. There you go. <laughs> Print it. Print. They're just, the ideas the are money. just flowing. <laughs> Print the money. <laughs> serial movies, porn movies. <laughs> we got it all. I know. Um, okay, so CW right now has like five shows. And, of course, there's still two more days left in the week. So let's say... Um, CW is given the green light to choose any fucking DC character, any DC character to feature in their lineup to go along with the other five shows. Who it has to be the, it has to be the Arrowverse, right? Uh, yes. Who would you pick? If I had a choice. Yeah. And it could be anybody in the DC universe. Anybody. Green Lantern. Oh, green Lantern. Okay. I think like it would be awesome for him to, you could do, you could, there's so much, there's so many, that show could never end. There's so many possibilities. He could be fighting villains on Earth, and then he could fight villains <laughs> in any part of the sector that he protects. Like, oh, and then, that's he, a good point. so he could, could be both in space and like in, on Earth. It would be so cool. And then, because I, I picture for some reason with, with Green Lantern as a TV show, like I get all these like cool stories that, um, you know, every week is like not like freak of the week, but like something Planet different. Planet of the week, kind of like <laughs> um, like so, something like it almost is like a blend of like how Star Trek was. Mm -hmm. Like instead oh, yeah. of like instead of like science, like learning other cultures or whatever, he would have to solve like other weird, you know, action set pieces for the week. Disputes. I don't know. Yeah, like I don't know. It just I feel like the Green Lantern TV show. You know, if you can make Supergirl fly, you could probably do a way better job. Although, I hope some of the CW costumes aren't that great. That'd be an expensive fucking show, I bet. Yeah, it would. It would. <clears throat> but it'd probably be better than Arrow. So, cancel Legends and then, <laughs> and then get green light, Green Lantern. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Or cancel cancel Arrow and Legends and bring Green Lantern. Because Arrow's about done, too. Uh, right, let's see here. Let's see. <clears throat> Okay. What if you were casting for the live action Thundercats? Oh shit. Um Who's your Lino? Let's start with that. Uh Let me think, let me think. Lino. So it's gonna be live action? Yep. They're gonna go with the they're gonna go with the makeup, so and it's gonna look like oh, really God. awesome. Let's makeup. go with uh, let's go with John Hamm from Mad John Hamm Mad as Man. Lino. Yeah, that's an older Lino. So you're supposed to have a younger Lino. Well, uh, he's like twenty. He's like twenty something okay. when this show takes uh, place. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, well, he's not in his twenties anymore. But let's say Jake Gyllenhaal because he's got the build. Okay, I I actually for for some reason I thought Charlie Hunnam right away. Charlie Hunnam. Oh, Charlie yeah. Hunnam would be good too. He's actually probably okay, the right who's age, your but... who is your Chitara? Chitara. Uh Rosario Dawson. Okay, that's a good one. <coughs> who is your Panthera? Now refresh my memory. Is he the bad guy? No, Panthera is the gray guy with the nunchucks. Who's the gray, gray guy with the nunchucks. Who's the, the bad guy? I can't remember what his Mumra. name is. Mumra. Is it Mumra? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, we'll we'll get to Mumra. So Panthro is the that's right. He's the older uh He's the older guy with the nunchucks and fixes all the cars. Right, right, right. Uh okay, it's gotta be an older guy. Um uh maybe someone like Morgan Freeman, but he, I'm not so that's a little too That's too old. That's too old. Um Trying to think, I'm like, who's an old person right now? Um, I would, I, my, you want to hear my choice? Like a John Goodman or something? Uh, um, Panthera? Do you remember what he looks like? Yeah, he's like old and gray. He's he's uh he's he wears like that um the blue the like blue, suspenders. Yeah, the blue yeah, but suspenders. he's ripped. John Goodman has never been ripped. Yeah, I suppose you're. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're like, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, who the fuck? I'm not making Michael Bay's version. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I would ch- I would go with like a Vig Rames. Um, yeah, that would be good. Uh, let's see, Tigra. Hmm. Tigra, Tigra. What the? I'm trying to remember what he looks like too. A tiger. <laughs> yeah. He, well, yeah. He wears like a like a blue suit. The blue too, leotard. But yeah. with like a but his his not he doesn't goes down flowy, to his feet. He doesn't have a flowing mane like uh, what's his thunder uh, Lionel does. Um, no. It's like his second hand man, but he's a little older though than Lionel too. Uh, yeah, but not like not like in his forties. So like an older brother type thing. Uh, okay. Almost. Uh, maybe like a Hemsworth. Um, uh. I was actually going to go with your John Hamm. <laughs> well, John is John Hamm in his 40s? I guess it is his late 40s. Yeah. So he'd probably work. Yeah, he would work. Um, let's see. Who's, oh, Kit and Cat. The Kit, twins. The twins. Not a, Well, one's a boy, one's a girl, so. Right, right. Um, they're, they're, they're little, right? They're young, yeah, but they're, they're but they're in their they look like they're in their teens, and I already know who I would go with. Oh shit! Um, well, I was almost gonna say a couple of the Stranger Thing kids, but if they're older. Uh, Not no, they're about the they're about the right age. Because like Millie Brown would be great as the girl. Oh, I'm that's trying a good to think of as a boy though. Uh shit. I don't know any like young like young actors, you know. I would probably for the girl. I would probably go with the redheaded kid in it. That's my first choice. Oh, shit, that's a good one. She looks like a Thundercat. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then I was the the black kid from Stranger Things. Oh yeah, I love that guy. So those two, I would probably do Kit and Cat because they're in makeup. So who gives a shit? Right, right. Um, all right, who's your Mumra? Okay, so that's the uh, that's that's the bad guy. Um, yeah, I remember he's like all shriveled and shit, and then he just turns all buff when he says the magic chant. Right, right. Which would be sweet if you could do that. Fuck, you know, that'd be that's just, this is tough. It's so tough. Um, I don't know why Ian McDermott comes to my mind right away. <clears throat> um, Okay, someone older. Uh, so basically, you could you're gonna have to CG both. Right, right. You need a you need a shriveled up person, and then you need to be able to make them all like buff and shit. So right. they wouldn't really like. I don't know if they would really like stand in for those characters. Then I guess they would be like a. Well, they would still do like the motion cap. You know what I mean? Like right. it would still look. It would look like whatever actor you're getting. It would look like their disheveled face. It would look like they're disheveled. Yeah, like um, like they're they're wrapped around bandages because that's how that's how Mummer is, and you can see his jaw and shit. Uh, God, man, this is killing me. Um, fuck, I don't know. I don't know who I would get for that. I think I would get. I think if it was just CG on both sides, but still motion capturing their face. I think I would get like Benner the Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. I like his. I like his voice. I like his voice too. You could get a Michael Fassbender. You could get. Yeah, but they're not going to be uh, there. Like, like it's not. It's not really them. No, no, no. Because the, he's right. It's the, the the voices. Like even like someone like Edward Norton might might be okay. Or like uh, I don't. His voice isn't tough enough. <laughs> like it's not scary enough to me. Maybe, I think uh, like Denzel. I think, um, no, Denzel's got a fucking lisp. I'm not going to be fucking taking a mummy with the lisp seriously. <laughs> and see, like Liam Neeson's done too many, too many voiceovers. Right. Maybe well, oh, that's why, maybe, I, uh, dude. So a uh, Gary Oldman or like, uh, oh so, like, yeah, Gary yeah. Oldman could do it. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I was going to say like Forrest Whitaker, but he like spits. You know who would actually be really good yeah. is Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson would be good. Actually, Mel Gibson would probably make a pretty good Mumra, like his yeah. voice. Yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty. It's like good. raspy, like older <clears throat> raspy. You know what I mean? Just add some after effects to that. I think right. it would work. I could, yeah, 
Oh man, I want to oh, see. I want to see this movie now. <laughs> <laughs> we just casted for this movie, folks. So when you're ready to do it, listen yeah, back on it. this podcast. And yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, what if you could bring back or continue any TV show or movie franchise? What would it be? Oh, that's easy. Uh, it would be the greatest American hero. Which they're they're bringing that back though. Yeah, but I want my version of it. It's like I don't want it to change. Too. Yeah, I don't want it to change. Like I want it. Like I want it the way. Like that guy's a reporter. The other guy's a cop. Like that's what I want. Like something about their dynamic too worked for me. I meant like bring that show and it never stopped running. Like that's what I would. I would go back in time and say never stop running, and then I would have like all ten seasons of it. In my collection. <laughs> That's a good one. I, you know, I, I love that show as a kid. I don't think it went more than what, four seasons or whatever. And then it, yeah, it kind of went, got a little weird, um, toward the it end. It was the first time, like, if you think about it, that, that might be the first time ever on like live action TV where, yeah, it was meant to be funny, but it was also like, Hey, you know what? I don't remember Superman training in the comic books. Yeah. How did how did he learn how to fucking fly right? They gave and then him, this guy puts a cape a, on. The aliens gave him a manual, but he shrunk down <laughs> to an ant size and then and then enlarged and he lost the manual. <laughs> yeah. So he so this guy puts on the suit and like he looks like I was like, "Oh shit, yeah. How would you control your body if you've never been taught how to fucking fly?" Right. Like you know, maybe probably by the fourth season he should have learned by now. <laughs> Because I feel like you've flown enough. <laughs> there, there was an episode where he he hit his head so hard that he had amnesia. And he forgot who he was, and he right. he was able to like fly really perfectly. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He like I he remember fought, that one. Yeah, he fought perfectly. There, yeah, because like each episode, he was figuring out a certain power. Like he figured out he could make things burn, but he could only do it if he if he didn't face it. What he was looking at. He he'd burn stuff behind him, so he'd have to like turn around and then and then concentrate and then whatever it was would blow up behind him. So like right. every th- every little thing that he learns, he learns it in the most fucked up, stupid way. Um, so yeah, that's that's a good one. I I'm I'm actually looking forward to that, and I hope they do it justice, and I hope it's a slow yeah. burn. I don't want them like like when they brought back the Bionic Woman, like she fucking knew everything in one episode, and I'm like, no, you gotta like. You, well, you, this entire show is based off of not knowing right how, how to, to be the suit. like, yeah, exactly. Or how to be, yeah. So that's what I think. That's why I think this is like, it's like it, it predates like it, it paved the way for something like Batman Begins. Yeah, where you're yeah. like, what would happen if nobody taught you how to fucking fight? You know, you have all these powers and nobody teaches you. Like, hey, you got to like, how could you control not knocking down a wall with your finger? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're like Iron Fist. You gotta fluff my chi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this and I only down. punch walls. <coughs> right. Uh, oh, it's my turn, right? Yep, your turn. All right. Uh, let's see. You talk first. I talk first. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, I only got a couple left because you fucked up my last one. Yeah, but I took that one too. Yeah, it was a good one though. All uh, right. <clears throat> so I think, well, this is kind of the same question, but mine was uh, if you were hired to remake any movie or show, what would it be? So remake. Um, yeah, it has to be a remake. You know, quite honestly, I, I, and I really wanted it to work when they remade it, the, the when they remade it or continued it, whatever. But I really wanted uh, Knight Rider to work. Um, so for a TV show then? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd okay. really want, I'd really want Knight Rider to work. Um, I love that. Yeah, I was show. disappointed that the second go around really disappointed. Wa- it was so terrible. Like there was a slew of NBC shows that they brought back that they just shit on big time. And that was yeah. one of them. It was Knight Rider. It was Bionic Woman. I think there was a couple other ones. Um, they just kept bringing it back for whatever sake and not having you know a good story. You know what sucks is that like Val Kilmer was really good in that show. Yeah. It was the best thing in that show. Yeah. The car looked cool when it wasn't doing something stupid like fake CG-ish. There was like really bad CG in that in that show. Yeah. It, 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 was, it was not good. But 
I'd like to see them, you know, give that a go, um, you know, the right way. Or, or, I mean, if they could figure out a way to make it into a really, like, good action comedy movie for the big screen, I'm all for that. But, but it would have to be, like, you know, somebody that was really passionate about it. Because, like, I, I'll be honest, like, when they showed Jumanji, I was like, I don't want to see this. This is fucking stupid. Why would they do this? And But they, they did it right. They treated it right. the way it should have been treated. And so if you could find a way to do that, I'm all for it. Because, like, I love, like, 21 Jump Street. I mean, you know, when that movie was coming out, I was like, why? You know, but they, right, they figured it out. So, um, and I was actually looking forward to a, a, a Men in Black 21 Jump Street crossover. I was like, oh, shit, that's, that's really interesting, you know, especially if they le- let these guys do that thing. I want to see that. But, of course, it never happens. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I you know, people out there probably go like, oh, the obvious answer is Firefly. I mean, of course, like everybody wants Firefly, but but there's certain... No, if I, if, like, I like Firefly, but it, I don't know. It, it's not nostalgic for me. Yeah, I mean, I love the show. It was great, but, it, man, it's just been a long time. It's like, let it go at this point. Right. You know? But if I could bring back or continue any TV show franchise, I think that's the one I asked you. Um, I, I, I would have brought back like, um, like Buffy or, or Angel, you know, um, I still have to finish Angel. It's, it's heartbreaking. It, it's so good. It's heartbreaking. And I, I actually went and bought, uh, cause after the shows, both shows were canceled, Joss turned to the comic book world to create the, the next seasons of both of those shows. And the comic books are phenomenal. Like it's, it's fact, in fact, the Buffy comic is called season eight. That's how, you know, and then Angel is called season six. It just keeps going. So, um, but yeah, fucking Angel just rips your heart out. I mean. Uh, yeah, I got to watch it, but I was so, <clears throat> I mean, those are, <coughs> those are one hour episodes. Yeah. So and I, I watched like seven or eight seasons in the span of like a month. That's all I watched, which yeah, is Buffy. Yeah, I did too. So I was like all vampired out by the time that was over and I knew. Angel was really good, but I just never went back to watch it well, because I was so it was I, too much. I the way, <coughs> what I did was when I binged both I binged both those shows as if they were both on at the same time again because uh, like, sometimes they had crossover. I think right exactly like Seth Green would cross over, Angel would cross over, like they you know kind of went all over the place. Um, and and it's good to watch it that way because there's a couple things that happens in Buffy that when so-and-so shows up, you're like, holy shit, that's awesome. Like, you know, it all makes sense. It all weaves together. So when you watch it out of out of order, it kind of jacks with it a little bit. Like when someone right. shows up, you're like, why did they show up for? You know, it, it didn't make a lot of sense. So you have to kind of like watch it, um, you know. So after like three seasons of Buffy, then you jump to Angel, then you just rotate, you go back and forth. Um, oh, your question. I think that's it. We're done. That's your that's your up. Oh, oh, so well, actually I have I have like two more, but um pick your best one. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm not going to ask this one. I'll ask this one right here. Okay. So, what if you could jump into any uh what what if you could jump into a comic book and inhabit a superhero or even a villain, who would it be? So I I become you whatever. Jumanji it yeah you go into okay. the comic book <coughs> and you can inhabit any superhero or even a villain who would it be? Ooh, tough one. I would have to probably. I'd probably say Green Lantern. Oh okay. Just the thought of being able to create anything with your mind is like limitless. And I'd be really afraid of the shit that you create. <laughs> so you're like, <laughs> you're like how, look how fucked up this is, Beach. <laughs> like, <laughs> I win. I win. <laughs> I'm winning. You got to come over and see what I just made. <laughs> yeah, check this shit out. I'm like, is it a roller no, coaster? Just, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's an, it's a, it's a roller coaster and it's a, it's a car and a ramp to save a helicopter. Right. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Yeah, that's all you can uh, come up with. Why so yeah. complicated? <laughs> why not yeah, a why net? Just, yeah, why not like a glove? 
You had to drive a, you had to drive an imaginary car and then create the track. <laughs> yeah. That's where you went. And you almost killed everybody in the process. Yeah, in the process, yeah. <laughs> Fucking A. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Fucking retard. Um, uh, well, that was fun. Be kind of be kind of fun to do uh, what if scenarios with with uh, you know whoever guests we have on next because those are fun. You can yeah. you know really play around with that, um, get a little nutty. But uh, all right, cool. Well, hey, uh, if you guys uh, love what you what you listen, you know what you just heard, which I hope you do. I hope you keep downloading our podcast. Uh, we are on patreon.com forward slash chew on this podcast where you can sponsor us for as little as a dollar a month and. Um, you know, we have different tiers, different rewards. Uh, it's a really great way to support artists. And uh, we have a lot of really cool shit coming up. Uh, a lot of cons and live shows and all that stuff coming up this this uh, year. So it would really, really help us out. And also um, really would help us out our podcast if you went to iTunes and give us a rating, give us a little comment, a little shout out. We'll even do a shout out for you if you do us a shout out on iTunes, um, and of course we're on Google Play and YouTube and all that good stuff, and you can always email us at chewonthispodcast at gmail.com and you can also find us uh, Twitter and Instagram at chewonthispod where we've got, you know, a lot of hilarious tweets and articles and, uh, and of course uh, chew on this meme and then of course, Vic, we have what else before we sign off? This fucking Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking Wawa that's still not out here in California. It's bullshit. I'm getting mad. <laughs> Hashtag I'm getting mad West that Coast I get, Wawa. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag West Coast Wawa. It's this, it's this great convenience store that's open 24 hours. It may, you can make your own sandwiches and order online through your phone. And I really want Wawa right now. It's like late that we're recording tonight and I'm up. <laughs> Hashtag I this is bullshit. To, <laughs> I wish I could go to Wawa right now and get like one of their uh one of their uh they have buttered toffee. Oh toffee my god. There. Oh I want that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. So hashtag West Coast Wawa. Please come the fuck out of here before <laughs> I have to fly back and get that shit. <laughs> it's an expensive trip. Yeah, in ten in ten days that I was in New Jersey, I went to Wawa eight times <laughs> spend over like 200 bucks <laughs> there was one day i spent 50 dollars at a wawa and it wasn't for gas <laughs> i fucking binged the shit out of that place <laughs> couldn't sleep went to couldn't sleep went to wawa it's three in the morning i'm heading over there yeah three in the three in the morning i think i'll have a meatball parm <laughs> I shit myself the next day, but it was worth and I it. Went, and then I went back for coffee because I needed to stay up. <laughs> it cleared me out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> West Coast Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag West Coast Wawa. All right. Well, that was uh, Chew on This Plays uh, What If. <laughs> Episode 120 of Chew on This and Nerd United Podcast. I'm BJ. Vic. Till next time, folks. Chew on that. Later. <laughs>